YouTube, YouTube, what it do, loved ones? You know the motto. If you can, after the story, go over there, hit us with a like, which is a thumbs up, and that'll let us know we're kicking our stuff. This topic right here is our views and our opinion with us growing up with Mexicans inside our communities, homie. So uh, I'm going to pass it to BJ, and he going to illustrate a little bit more on it. In the first part of it is uh how was it when you was a little kid bj can you re can you go back before we really went to school how was your relationship and view with uh mexicans inside the community with you well inside our community where i grew up at the uh relationship with the mexicans it was like real uh it was real cool, man. You know, like, a lot of us was like, was like family. You know what I mean? Like, for example, like, my first name and my brother's uh, middle name came from a Mexican, you know? A Mexican that stayed next door to us. He was like real tight with our parents and uh, he became our godfather. So when we was born, they let him name us. And uh, we grew up, you know, with the Mexicans around my community where, you know, we done everything together, you know. Don't get me wrong, sometimes as kids, you know, it'd be cruel jokes made and this and that, but in reality... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. We was all poor, so we grew up doing things like our parents borrowed sugar from each other, eggs from each other. Uh, we learned about different cultures, you know, uh, at an early age. I learned how to make refried beans from going to my neighbor's house, and they taught me things, you know, how to cook certain Mexican dishes, you know what I mean, or uh, what you call it, uh, Latino dishes, or, you know what I mean, things of that culture, that nature. And then uh, at school, we used to do things like we played kickball together, you know, sometime or you had a few blacks that would uh, get out there and play soccer. I wasn't never good at it, so I didn't really play it. You know, but the majority of the time we played kickball and learned how to play handball with them. And some of them played basketball. Some of them ran track with us, you know, all the stuff. Some of them played Cameron with us. And then uh, as we got into the pop locking era, a lot of them was cop blocking with us, you know, going on and so forth. And uh, we was walking home from elementary, and some of them was even our best friend where if something happened to them, we all participated. You know, we didn't let nobody mess with them, and they didn't let nobody mess with us. It was even one that uh, stayed on my street. He was kind of, uh, at an early age, he had... Uh, learned that he liked it the same sex but to us he was family so we didn't pay no mind to what his sexual preference was we was kids then we didn't care we just knew that was our homie so we all walked it with him hung at his house and everything you know what i mean and every now and then like i said as kids we was cruel to him and about his sexual preference but other than that till this day he's still my homie you know like if I was out right now, I could go to his house at any time and his family gonna feed me and I could kick him with him, you know what I mean? Uh, another thing we did was, we used to, uh, by us being poor, we used to talk about each other's shoes. You know, at the time, they had, they had uh, places like Zodis and Woolworth, and they sold these cheap shoes. And the shoes used to be in the barrel where you would have to dig in there and match you appear. Sometimes you might pull out two size sevens, but they both be left, or they both be right shoes. You have to match them together and make sure you got the right matches. And the shoes, they used to have stripes on the side of them like Adidas, but they was no name. They were just some shoes with thick rubber bottoms. A lot of the uh, Mexicans used to wear them to play soccer in because they was good running shoes. And the blacks, at that time, we used to wear, like, the karate shoes that Bruce Lee wore, the ones with the brown bottom that they give you in prison in the hole. 
or we would wear the boulevards that Bruce Lee used to wear, the ones that was black with the white bottom on them and our shoes. And we wore those because a lot of our families couldn't really uh, afford to buy expensive pairs of shoes for us. So we would go to school with them. And when we used to go to school, we used to always be clowning each other like, you know, we would say things to them like, man, you running around here with them cleats on playing soccer all damn day. You got cleats on at school. And they used to clown us like, man, I ain't never seen no black man uh, do no martial arts and stuff. They used to, you know, be clowning us like, you know, you think you Asian or something and so forth. And then, uh, yeah, we went on into uh, junior high school. You know, what was it like? in Inglewood as far as y'all report in the elementary with the, with the Mexicans. Well, I'm going to take it back a little farther before I migrated to Inglewood, young, living in L.A. And uh, my recollection, recollection of the Mexicans there, it was, uh, it was cool, homie. You know, we was young. You know, we didn't really see no hostility, uh, uh, racial tension back then. And and like you said, we didn't look at the color of a skin for a friend, homie. And uh, I could remember, like I said, young, walking to school, uh, digging in chip bags with, 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 with a Mexican or a Mexican opening up his hand. I'm pouring him some candy in his hand. And uh, even going all the way back to living in L.A., uh, in the Harpies. Uh, a lot of them dudes later became Harpies. And uh, I remember running up in driveways, kicking balls, and hanging with them dudes. So, like I said, the hostility wasn't never there because we just looked at each other like kids inside the neighborhoods that was friends, homie. And uh, going into the, the, the elementary thing, it was the same way. You know, the same way you were have a favorite homie in your class that you can crack jokes with in the back. Uh, we was able to do it with the Mexicans. You know, some of them was considered some of our best friends to laugh with in classes or if your teacher not there and they separate us to different classes, you be hoping you go with Fernando or Jesus or somebody like that that you, that you could laugh with. You know, because in our time, it was different. They, they spoke more fluent English, you know, the more American ties Mexicans back then spoke more fluent English than the ones now. So it was able, you was able to build a proper relationship back then. And uh, so, like I say, once again, we didn't see no racial hostility between blacks and Mexicans. And then to top it off, some of our, our aunties and mothers them back then dated Mexican dudes because like I said they was more Americanized and a lot of the Mexicans you think back in the days uh going downtown in the Aliso village and some of them you know they was integrated with blacks homie back in the day so like I said I want to rephrase again we didn't wow. see the racial hostilities so uh the move in wow. uh, yeah yeah to turn it up a notch more when you went to junior high and at junior high we start making different decisions on our lifestyle you know banging was the top thing back then so in junior high how did things started changing homie could you tell me a little bit about that bj like the dress code like what did we adopt from the mexicans like they adopt a lot of our culture can you can you touch that real quick well, one of the things that I could say that we uh, adapted from them was the khaki suits. You know, when I got in junior high, a lot of Mexicans used to wear, you know, khaki suits. They creased them up real good. Uh, the Chuck Taylors, you know, they wore the Chucks. And then when the Cortezes came out, most of the Mexicans took to the Nike Cortez. They took to them real tough. And uh, a lot of us were still stuck on the Chucks. Once we got a hold to the Chucks, I first remember seeing a pair of Chucks. Uh, Dr. J used to play basketball in them. And uh, 
we still had them same ties in my community to the Mexicans. You know, I remember uh, when we started banging, I had a friend named uh, Victor Cox, and uh, he was black, but he had started claiming B-13. And uh, me, him, Rascal from B-13, and Rascal brother Oscar, we all used to walk home together. We all stayed on San Pedro, so we all used to walk home together, sharing candy, sharing beer and stuff. And then a lot of us adapted drug habits from messing with them, like, you know, I remember when we was young, when we used to ditch school together, we would huff paint and sniff gas and all type of stuff, you know, just experimenting and having fun, you know, ditching and doing stuff, you know, we didn't have no business doing, going to Stevenson Burgers up on Main and different little stuff. And like I said, I started noticing that as we started banging, certain things started happening and like... We had two different Mexican cliques, sometimes three, going to school with us and in our neighborhoods. And sometimes we would intervene in a beach. Like, for example, we had a, a homie from South Blos, his name was Wolfie. Wolfie and his brothers and them stayed in the hood. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. When they started banging South Los, I don't know how the beef started with them in the B-13s, but when they started banging South Los, sometimes the B-13s would give them a pass just because all three of us were together. But sometimes they'd fade them up. Regardless of we were together or not, they just wouldn't shoot them. They'd just be like, man, you have to get out, and they'd go get out and get it out the way, you know? And uh, the same thing with the Gardena 13s. It was a few of them stayed in the neighborhood and was going to school with us. And uh, I started noticing, like, through the gang culture that uh, certain Mexican hoods had started being allies to the Bloods and the Bloods being allies to them as well. And then the same thing with certain Mexican gangs that was next to the Crips. They started being allies with the Crips as the Crips being allies to them. And that's how that was working in the early 80s. You know, it was like every every little clique, we all had our little crews and cliques and we all got along, but certain ones we didn't get along with. It was like everybody started choosing sides. And once everybody started choosing sides, it became harder to navigate around LA. Like certain Mexican hoods, I couldn't go into because I was a blood or whatever. And they ran with the Crips, so they would get us. And then it was like that everywhere around L.A. towards going into high school. And then I started learning little things from going over my homie's house, like how to speak Spanish. I started learning certain words and mainly the bad stuff, you know. But uh, they was trying to teach me and stuff, you know. It was like, like I said, it was still cool. It was like real tight, you know doing tattoos with each other, all that stuff. Eating and drinking at each other's house. And you can even see us sometime like riding in the car together, going to, going to different hoods and everything. What about uh, when you got to junior high school? How was it for you? Uh, well, I'm going to hit it from uh, junior high. Seconds remaining. Uh, I'm going to hit it to junior high. And... uh. The relationship, homie, like you said, it, it wound up getting stronger with them dudes. Because, like you said, it, it wasn't no racial tension. It wasn't no racial hostility. So, once again, these dudes is becoming best friends. And at that time, they was a little bit more seasoned than, than, than us, some of us, some of us black dudes that was just going into junior high before high school. So... I gravitated to the homie Gangster from Inglewood 13, and that's how I got a lot of my style and character from as far as the dress code-wise, with, you know, Ben Davis, khaki suits, and the Cortez when those came about. You know what I'm saying? And uh, also, wow. also, like you said, they enemies became our enemies, as well as the Crips becoming the Inglewood 13 enemies at that time. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, uh, at junior high, the Inglewood 13s, they top 
rivals ops at that time was the Lenny 13s, homie. So by the I 13s, kind of like, you know, sharing jurisdictions with us. That 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 brought us prone, propped us and prompted us to getting into their beef, as well as the 60s came through, they'd get in they in our beef. And like I said, it wasn't no racial tension. We didn't look at it like all, all the, the Crips came through, the uh the I-13s or the Hispanics in this hood knocked on them. Uh, 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 we didn't look at it like that. We looked at it like we still protecting the area of the common cause, homie. Uh, so 89 on up, G stuff, not Y stuff, with on the edge with BJ APB. And we're going to dig into part two uh, of our tides with the Hispanic cultures inside our neighborhoods. I'm out.